Hello and welcome to another Google Classroom video tutorial. Today, we're going to look at the brand new feature of the Google Classroom, rubrics. Google has announced this feature recently and at the time of the recording, it's still under development. The access has been given to some testers and uh, I've been fortunate enough to be one of them. So I'm super excited to share uh, with you what Google has prepared for us. If you're watching this tutorial when this feature has been released, then you're a lucky one and you can just follow along with me. If you're watching this tutorial when this feature hasn't been released, well, just see it as a head start to get ready when it will become available. So without further ado, let's have a look at the brand new feature of Google Classroom rubrics. If you go to assignment, you will see a new sign has been added to the user interface to the right of the topic. First thing I need to do is create a title. Because I don't have any rubrics, I'm going to create a rubric from scratch. I'm going to be using this rubric for grading student essay. So my first criteria is going to be word choice. I'm going to assign three points for level three, and this is going to be a description, accurate use of vocabulary. For the sake of time, I'm going to keep my description very simple. My second level is going to cost two points, it's going to be level two, and the description will be average use of vocabulary. My third level is going to give student one point, it's going to be level one, and the description will be poor use of vocabulary. So at a level, we click on the plus button. To delete a level, we need to click on three dots and delete the level. So my first criteria is ready. I can add a new criteria, and if I click that, a new field will be generated for another criteria. Or what I can do, I can duplicate this criteria and just change it. Word choice, I will change it to grammar and tweak my description a little bit. First description will be accurate use of grammar. The second description is going to be average. I can duplicate grammar and choose opinion. First level is going to worth four point, then three, two and one. Google rubrics automatically generate the top score. I have three points in word choice, three points in grammar, and four points in opinion, which gives me 10 points. Once my rubric is ready, I'm gonna click save. Once you save the rubric, it will be viewable in the assignment. Uh, you can click on the rubric. This is what it will look like. You have an option to collate the criteria, expand them one by one, or expand them all at once. Once your assignment is ready, click Assign. The assignment has been generated. Why don't we take a look at this assignment and rubric from the student's end. So as a student, I can see that a teacher has posted a new assignment. I can see in my stream, or I can go to my classwork and see it from there. Assignment for test of rubric. First thing I notice when I open this assignment is that it has a rubric. If I click around the rubric, there's nothing I can do really, but this, uh, the rubric is a good way to let your students know what is expected of them. I know what I need to do to get uh, 10. My, I need to make sure that my vocabulary is accurate, my grammar is accurate, and I don't have a description for opinion, but uh, they should be there. So why don't we try and submit our work so a teacher can grade it? We're going to imagine that the assignment for rubric is my essay. Now my assignment is turned in, and it's time for a teacher to mark it. So from the teacher's screen, I'm gonna click on turned in and see an MS2 iPad 2, this is this student, who has submitted his work. As a student, I can now use the rubric I created for this assignment to mark students' work. To simultaneously view students' work and mark it with the rubric, I need to click on grading tool. My rubric will appear on the right-hand side of my screen. I can expand each level and mark it accordingly. So what we've done right now, we've looked at students' work and we've marked it at the same time using our rubric. You will notice that Google rubric has generated the total score of seven out of 10 based on the levels that we have selected. What it didn't do, however, it didn't transfer the rubric score into the grade. And unfortunately, at the time of the recording, while the um, Google rubric is still under development, this is how it works. It doesn't automatically transfer score of the rubric onto the uh, final grade. We have to do it manually. Hopefully when Google rubric is released, the score from the rubric will automatically be transferred to the final grade. So once we've done that, as usual, we're gonna click return and the work will be returned to the student. So let's go back to the student's view to see what has changed from their perspective. 
I can click on the rubric and see where my score came from. My word choice earned me two points, my grammar earned me two points, and my opinion earned me three points for the total of seven. Again, at the time of the recording, I cannot see the final score of the rubric. It should be seven out of 10 here because the rubric is still under development. Maybe that's why this score is not showing. And I can, I can also see my final score of uh, 70 out of 100. I'm super excited to share this feature with you and I think it has a great potential to streamline a student's workflow, increase the transparency in terms of expectations and where does this score come from. Uh, it's, it's just a really nice addition to the Google Classroom. I think this feature will be released uh, during the summer of 2020, maybe a bit sooner. Thank you for those of you who stayed till the end of the tutorial. Make sure to check my channel later on for more educational technology tutorials. Take care and see you next time.